Hey guys, welcome back to All Things Knives. It's your host, Fletcher, and today we are finally doing a review of the ASK Knives Jefferson. Without much to do, let's get her started. So, this guy, the Jefferson, was a new offering in the year of 2022 by ASK Knives. Basically, I'd call it a division or a sister company to... Medford Knife and Tool, owned by Greg Medford. I probably carried this guy for at least a month or two throughout this whole process. Just showing you guys all the tools that are on this. And that's it for this guy. Knife, pry bar, hex bit, does not want to open sometimes if you put them too tight this guy will not open and it kind of bent my nail all right without further ado let's let's wait compare it to a victorinox super tinker because that's what i like hello everyone for my scale how much does this guy weigh? 2.49, that's actually really good. Probably due to its polymer and titanium construction. All right, 2.49. Let's see how much this Super Tinker weighs. 3.015, pretty close, and with a lanyard. And I will add more tools, because it's not as beefy. Now, I did sharpen, I sharpened that guy once. The, uh... The ASK, I sharpened it once. Let's get this on. Okay. Let's get this guy. And let's get a measuring behind the edge. That is 32 thousandths behind the edge near the heel of the blade. After sharpening once, you probably saw it to slip to 19th there, but that's because it slipped. So when I leave it right at the edge of the apex, that's what I'm getting. Now, I'm curious what the tip is, because if I had to guess, it's even more. Sometimes it's hard to get these ears right. It's actually pretty even thickness from feel the tip. That's, I mean, that's actually pretty good considering I thought it was going to be worse. But I mean, this is more than. It just that got that that that's way too much. Look at that. This is a non-locking knife. There's no way you're going to be prying with a non-locking knife. If anything, you can just use the tool they include. This pry bar, this chisel bar. You can just use that to pry with and not the knife. So if I were them, take the thickness of the blade stock down, make a better cutting tool. Now I did use this to cut boxes, you know, and it, it, it did cut just fine, but it's nowhere, you get, you definitely got to put more force into it. You know, and, and for a multi-tool kind of style knife like this, I feel like it would benefit better from just a thinner, a thinner grind. Actually, I'm going to leave this out because I just want to illustrate a point with this. Now, I know Greg likes to use... Man, this thing is dirty. So dirty. Okay. That's 15 thousandths, if not less. Look, I'm getting 14 off that reading towards the heel. That's after sharpening, by the way. 16 thousandths. I wonder what the tip is. 
This is half the thickness. 16. And then look at what this is at the spine. It's... It's like 0 0.07 of an inch. It's seven hundredths of an inch. Let's see. I bet this is 18. I bet this is 0 0.18. Yeah, 18. So this is 0 0.12. I think that that's thinner and in regards to how thick some of the Medfords are, but man, I just think that this should have a thinner blade on it. Kind of like how the Victorinox does. Now, I know one of the things that they advertise is that it's a beefier build of a Victorinox, but you already have beefier tools. I feel like if you did a slimmer blade, it could help you fit another tool in there. You know, so that you're not only limited to these three shells. Now, this guy is modular, so you are able to take it apart and kind of change your tools. Now, that's a huge plus. I can't do that on the Victorinox. I definitely can't do that on the Victorinox. One thing I will say is that even though... Man, I need to loosen those up a little bit. My nails are a lot... They're pretty down to the, to the bare... There, they're, they're pretty down to the bone. Um, this bottle opener is amazing. The bottle opener on this is fantastic. And so is the screwdriver. They, they did a, this part of the tool right here, fantastic. If you're someone who actually uses their multi-tool to pop open bottles, this is better than the Victorinox bottle opener. This kind of semi-flathead, semi-Phillips, it actually works pretty good in Phillips, I will say. So that, that they did a good jo job on. I didn't really have to pry it all with, with this portion and most of the scraping I actually just did with the blade, to be honest. So those two, two tools are fantastic, but if this, this guy is designed as well as this is, phenomenal. I just didn't have to pry anything. I don't really work in a job where I have to pry anything, you know? And the range finder doesn't really do me any good because... Yes, I work at a sporting goods store, but all my stuff that I deal with is, you know, from five yards away. You know, a range finder's not going to do me good. And it all's not. I'm not working leather or punching anything. Scissors would do me good. I know they want to do scissors. Scissors are hard to do. Okay, I was actually talking to Steve, Chef Kalari, about this. And, you know, he, he made a really good point that scissors are really hard to do right without any wobble and you know with the tolerances you would expect from a Medford that's really hard to do and I, and I agree but they did advertise that more tools are coming more tools are coming for this guy but I do like that it's a local company you know they're 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 local I mean I can drive 40 minutes away and go get another tour of their factory if I wanted this guy's an s45 VN. That's what was advertised on the Blade HQ website when I bought this. And it behaved just like S45 VN. Pretty similar to Spyderco stuff. No complaint. As you can see, the scales on this guy, they're an injection molded plastic, just like the Victorinox. They will scuff up, just like the Victorinox, but it's only 30 bucks to replace them. So if you're someone who hates the way Victorinox scales get all scuffed up like this, see that? The scratches they get. If you're someone who hates that, for 30 bucks, and, and you can change colors. So, and you can get camo, and they have all kinds of patterns. They actually make it pretty fun with the scales on this guy to be able to switch them out. So that's actually pretty cool. And I will say, just look at that. They did a really good job on the, like, the half stop and the pull, and it, it's actually a rather enjoyable experience when deploying the blade. The tolerances on this guy are spot on. They did it. They, I, you know, even if I have complaints about how thick the blade should be, and maybe some other tools I wish there were, this guy still does a 
fantastic job. And look at that. I believe I paid somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 for this guy. Prices could have changed. That was in 2022. But having a mod modular, if I really wanted, I could go send this off to go get reground and then just buy another factory blade. And I can change the blade shape. I think it's $75 for a new blade from Medford. Not a bad price. Tools are around that same price, if not a little cheaper. You know, they're less steel. So with this, I have a steel, I have a multi-tool I can take apart and modify. And that's actually really cool. I think that's a really cool concept. Me, personally, because I like knives that are going to cut better, I'm not prying or anything like that. And even if I was, I would use this tool and not the blade. So in terms of needing anything hard use, I would say design the tools to be harder use. Like Medford, you, or ASK, you know, Medford, ASK. I've seen you fact your, your manufacturing. You guys are a small enough place to where you could switch the steel. You could do... You could do a non-stainless tool steel for your your tools. He treat them lower, and they still be very tough. And then you do a stainless like this with a thinner blade. You guys could do that entirely, and it, I think you guys could pull it off actually pretty well. And I think that if what you're going for is kind of a harder use tool, that's kind of in made for that. I think that's kind of the route that sh should be gone or should be followed. But then again, I'm also not the person making this. You know, I saw the people at Medford. They're working hard. They are They are definitely working hard. They do four 10-hour shifts a week, I think is what Lindsay told me. They're at Medford and ASK. They were super nice while we were there. Me and my friend Obi were there, and they were more than kind to us, super friendly, joked around. Good people. Now, this is one of those knives that you can buy to support an American company that hires veterans, and they're a very pro-USA company. Now, I know there's going to be people who don't like Greg, but when I was there, Greg, I think, went out to go talk to Lindsay, who was helping us, and he personally shook me and my friend Obi's hand, introduced himself, and I told him about the ASK. I said, hey, I wanted to get one. And he asked, what did I have in my pocket? This is the knife I pulled out. I showed it to him. And I believe he asked, what, he either asked, what was my favorite tool or why I carry it? And I pulled out the scissors and I showed him the scissors and he had this look on his face like he had, like he was like, those damn scissors, I've been, almost like he'd been trying to figure it out, you know? And he did, they have said they want to do scissors. And I would not be surprised if it takes them a while because it's, it's something that is hard. To, you're bringing two blades together and you're having to fold them up. And if you want to maintain tolerances and get a good feel, like the feel that this knife has, yes, I complained about the blade stock being a little too thick, but it does feel solid. It does, it feels really solid. There is no, there is no play except for this way. It is, it feels really solid. This is a, even, even with the gripes that I have, it is a well-made tool. The only thing that I would say was wrong with mine was, was this. The, this tool here can tuck below but see how this one bounces back? So that's, and I, I can pop it out by doing this and it gets it back out. But I know for sure that if I were to bring that to Medford or even just show that to them, they would warranty that. They take pride in their work. I know that, they take pride in their work. So the, que the question being, right, this is a review. So would I recommend this to someone? Here is who I would recommend this to. If you are pro USA and you like your Swiss tools and you would like to try a USA made alternative that is modular. Yes, it's gonna be thicker. If you know you're hard on your knives and you want something that you know will never break on you, 
The Medford's a good option. This ASK is a good option. Medford made ASK, I should say. They're in the same building. You know, I've, I've seen where they make the Medfords, and I've seen the parts to the ASK. And I believe the these are made next door. I think that's the only part that they don't make in-house, but when it's next door, you can literally hop over and see how the quality control is going on your product you ordered. So... They consider it in-house, and I kind of agree because they can just walk next door. Like, it's... And they can go check on how the injection molding's going. So I don't... I wouldn't hold that against them. Uh, but everything else is made in-house, and it's really cool. They really are a bunch of hardworking people. Those machines are running nonstop. I would recommend this to someone... I would In the S45VN... All right, I will say the S40, because that's the only steel I have experience with. I can attest to their Magna Cut, which I know they'll probably want to run in this. Their S45EN tools are fantastic. The bottle opener was spot on. The screwdriver did quite well, and I actually had to use it a couple times, and it did phenomenally. The knife, even though it was harder and kind of thicker, the, I think the edge from the factory was convex, and so I had to sharpen past it. So my first sharpening was a little difficult to kind of get that the edge I wanted, and then after that, it was good. And and the steel responded well to the stones, I will say. Once I got kind of rid of that rounded geometry and kind of went for more straight edge, it did fantastic, I will say. The, the heat treat that they did on the S45 is good. It felt good. It performed well. The working edge lasted longer than I thought it would. And I think it's even still going on this. So, so kudos to them. Again, if you're someone who likes USA-made knives, you want to support a USA-made company, you don't mind spending a good amount of money. This is $240. You know, definitely not for the average Joe Schmo. Definitely for someone who knows they want to get an ASK. They want to support a USA-made company, and they want a tool that's modular, that, they, that they're that they okay with the, the knives being thicker. You know, if you're looking for a blade on this that's going to just be stellar geometry like the Victorinox, this probably isn't the knife for you unless you get it reground. All right? But I will say this is a well-made knife, very customizable. Very customizable. And the warranty, Medford... As long as it's their fault, they will fix it. I can I can attest that. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the ASK, maybe some experiences you've had with it. If you would recommend it, maybe if you owned one of their other models, let me know how you liked it. This is the Jefferson, one of the first four models they ever released. If you guys are not subscribed, go ahead and please subscribe to the channel. Turn on that notification bell too, as I post pretty regularly. And that'll let you know when I do post. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And don't you forget to stay sharp.